So President Trump's former campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski, went on Fox News and um, he gave this hilarious nickname to Donald Trump that you're going to hear at the end here. Let's watch and then I'll, I'll give you my breakdown of why everything they're saying about the economy is nonsense. Meanwhile, President Trump is telling voters in New Hampshire last night that he is their only chance to keep the economy strong. Listen. I had a businessman the other day, one of the most successful guys in the country. I've never liked him, never liked him. He never liked me, I never liked him. I see him in the White House. I said, what are you doing here? He said, I'm working to make sure you get elected. I said, you gotta be kidding. You don't like me, I don't like you. What the hell is this all about? He said, that's right, we've had our differences. I haven't liked you. But to be honest with you, Mr. President, I have no choice. I said, you're right. You're right. First thing I've ever heard him say that I agreed with. He's got no choice. He got no choice. Well, recent numbers show jobless claims at 220,000, summer youth unemployment rate falling to a half century low, and the overall unemployment rate at a near 50 year low. Our next guest was in the front row at last night's rally in New Hampshire, former Trump campaign manager and author Corey. Lewandowski. Corey, great to see you. Uh, you know, let's start with the economy because he hit on all bases. I mean, he made an appeal or he made clear his appeal to all levels, all strata, economic strata in our society, from the top business leaders uh, to the blue collar workers. They are all connected. It's this idea that a rising tide lifts all boats, right? This is just the beginning. It's because of the deregulation environment that he's cutting those overburdened regulations in Washington coupled with the biggest tax cuts that our nation's ever seen means more people have more opportunity, more businesses have opportunity to grow, and everybody is feeling that benefit right now. Yeah. And look, we saw the stock market drop a little bit, but you don't see the mainstream media talking about the market today that was up over 300. Right. They're only there to chastise this president. They're very dishonest about it. And you know, what was interesting was he, he, signif he s significantly said that, that this is this is benefiting the blue collar workers more than any other level of society. This is exactly the group of people that the Democrats kept going on and on about during the Obama administration. We're trying to help them. Uh, they never gained a foot foothold at all on, econ on the economic ladder during the Obama administration, whereas now their wages are going up. The job situation has never been better. It's exactly those people that Democrats thought they had in his pocket that he is helping the most. That's why we see states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan turning out in record numbers to support this president at these rallies. You know, I was with the president in Cincinnati, Ohio, two weeks ago. I was with him last night in Manchester, New Hampshire, you know, my home state. These crowds are not the typical country club Republicans. These are the people who get up and go to work every day, and they know that the man sitting behind the Resolute desk in the Oval Office is fighting for them, fighting against China, because on a level playing field, we are the greatest country in the world, and we win every single time. He's bringing those jobs back here. I like to call Donald Trump the blue-collar billionaire. The blue-collar billionaire. Wow. That's special. That's a special nickname. Um, so I like when Trump told a story about running into another billionaire in the White House and uh, asking the guy... They don't like each other, but asking, like, what are you doing here? The guy's like, I'm trying to get you elected. And he said, oh, I have no choice. Because no story better illustrates our point, not his point. His point's like, isn't it great? One billionaire trying to get another billionaire elected? Yeah, Don, the reason he's doing that is because he knows it would be good for him and his fellow billionaires. So, it, like, without even trying, he proved the left narrative correct of class politics, of the, like, the uber-wealthy elite owner class looking out for themselves and screwing workers. And he tells this story at his rally to a room full of many people who are presumably workers, and a lot of them, if, at this point, if you're at a Trump rally, you're probably a little too far gone to even get it. But, yeah, like, the story he's telling is about how you're a sucker. And one billionaire is voting for another billionaire because he knows I'll look out for the interests of billionaires against workers. Isn't it great, fellow workers out here?
Blue collar billionaire. Oh my god, what a fucking cringy nonsense thing to say. Now, um, the other thing is, and I, I always tell you guys this stuff in advance, so you're not surprised when you stumble across stuff like this. If you notice, they bring up, oh, the unemployment rate. Oh, the unemployment rate is low, yeah. That is not a very good indicator of the health of the economy. And the argument, uh, you know, I've given is one that I remember from uh, when I was in college. Uh, the professor said, we can get 0% unemployment. And everybody's like, what? How? He says, slavery. <laughs> so is that, is that is that the end all be all? Like, oh, everybody's working. Sure, some of it's by forced labor, but minor details, bro. Minor details, bro. It's like, well, no. Like, that's massively important. What are the nature of the jobs? This is the gig economy, as people call it. And also, Trump used to cite what's called the U6 unemployment rate, which is the way that the official unemployment rate is calculated is total nonsense. They pretend like, oh, have you been looking for a job for X amount of time? Okay, you don't count anymore. What? That doesn't mean they have a job because they've been out of job for a long time. Uh, like... Ridiculous. So we used to cite what's called the U6 unemployment rate, which is a more accurate reflection of the real unemployment rate in the country. Now he does the official unemployment rate because it makes him look good. And also there's this other problem of unemployed and underemployed, which is you're way overqualified for your job. You're not making as much money as you want. You're working part-time when you want to work full-time. And that's about 13% when you look at unemployed plus underemployed. 13%. So, you know, they, it's easy. There's an old saying... There's lies, damned lies, and statistics. So you could paint whatever picture you want by cherry-picking your stats and see? Look! Look, everything's wonderful! See? Oh, this improves it with the numbers we gave you. What about the, you know, the wagon load of numbers that prove the exact opposite case? What about that? They don't have a response there. Um, and then the other thing is... Lewandowski was bragging about deregulation and the tax cut bill about how this helps workers and makes Trump the blue-collar billionaire. The deregulation helps nobody but Wall Street. Nobody but Wall Street. And this is the same philosophy that led to not only the Great Recession, the subprime mortgage crisis in the Great Recession, but the Great Depression. Deregulation always leads to boom-bust cycles in the economy. You say, oh, get rid of the rules and the smartest guys in the room on Wall Street will all make intelligent decisions like the invisible hand of the marketplace will be working. But no, they make terrible decisions that benefit themselves in the short run at the expense of the long-term viability of the economy. And you will see boom-bust cycles, and that's what we're seeing right now. Now, they said like, oh, but the market bounced back after a, day, a few days where it fell. I mean, how cocksure are these arrogant clowns? Listen, man, at some point, it's all going to tank. Yes, we're having up and down, up and down, up and down at the moment, but all the signs are there. We will hit a major recession within the next year, for sure, for sure. So, you know, for him to act like, oh, the media doesn't talk about it when it goes up. Actually, yes, it does, because there are these networks that show the ups and the downs, and the whole point of the network is to show what's happening with the market. And yes, it's it, they've talked about it when it goes up, they've talked about it when it goes down. Are you kidding me? Non-stop, they talk about it when it goes, oh, look, we broke another record, Woo. But again, smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. The thing that's so fucked up about the stock market is that when the stock market is doing well, that's not necessarily a reflection of how the workers are doing. But when the stock market tanks, it definitely does hurt the workers. So it's like the worst of both worlds when it comes to working people in the stock market. And, um, yeah, buckle up because... A lot of bad stuff is coming. There's been a lot of tricks that make it look like, oh, everything's great. Like stock buybacks, for example, were a huge thing that made it look like, oh, see, the economy is doing so wonderful. But that's just nothing but a greedy trick. So um, look out is my warning. But to use the tax cuts for the rich and deregulation as your argument as to why Trump's the blue collar billionaire is like, Using, using Dick Cheney's Iraq war as to why, an argument as to why Dick Cheney is so moral. It's just the exact opposite of the truth. Deregulation only helps Wall Street. The tax cuts overwhelmingly went to the rich, gutting the estate tax, cutting the capital gains rate, cutting the top marginal rate. Uh, in fact, in that tax bill, everybody who makes $75,000 a year or less um, gets their taxes raised over a decade. So, 
it, it's sad to me that this stuff tricks anybody because this is a government of buying for billionaires to the point where Trump even said it in the middle of that speech.